Praise God. You know, in, um, let's see, uh, two weeks from now, some of us will be in 70 degree weather. You know, I've said, I've always said I want to, told Hope, I want to move to the Bahamas. It's a median temperature, 70 degrees year round. That would be, uh, that would be wonderful. Praise God. You know, um, one of my favorite speakers that passed away not too long ago, he used to, anytime someone would come down there or they would ask where he was from, he'd say, uh, you know, he's from the Bahamas, where, the place where God lives. And then, and they said, well, you always say that, but we know you're joking. And he said, well, think about what he said on the cross. He said, today you'll be with me in paradise. <laughs> <clears throat> but the eye has not seen, ear has not heard. Amen. I just can't imagine. Let's uh, let's go to God in prayer. Father, we just want to thank you so much, God, for this day. God, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you for using us. God, we thank you that we are on this earth right now because you have a purpose for us. We thank you that you have a use for us, God. Lord, we thank you that the reason our eyelids open every day it's not for any other reason but because you have allowed it because you wanted them to open because you wanted to give our body strength because you wanted us to be on our feet because you wanted to use us Lord we just ask you more and more especially now that the time is nearing use us God Lord we give you our bodies. Lord, I know that you created this body, but we, you gave us a will. God, we give you our will. Lord, use us. Use us. In Jesus' name we pray. God, give us wisdom, give us knowledge, and give us understanding in tonight's message. And Lord, let us leave here knowing something that we didn't know before, inspired Give us revelation. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Is it cold enough out there for everybody? <clears throat> You're nervous. Flurries. Is that what you said? Mm. I'm not sure if it's a... I, I think it's going to be a very cold winter. I'm a, uh, I think we're going to get an early snow. Usually it seems like we're waiting until the last minute, but we've been talking, well, we had one message um, that I talked a little bit about prayer. Um, I'm still teaching on the kingdom because we're still uh, going over that message, thy kingdom come, but right before we went into the new year, God had really laid it on my heart about us returning to prayer in 2015 because you know all during the year we find things that we want to change uh, we come in here and we talk about what we want to see if you've ever came up here and stood on this carpet and wanted prayer or if you have went to an altar or if you have been in your car and you have been driving and you said Lord I, I just fill in the blank then you were motivated to say those words because there was something in your life that you wanted to change and a lot of times we spend a lot of time complaining about things and we really don't we, and we think that's praying and it's not we don't realize the power that we have in the tongue we read about it we hear preachers talk about it it gets us fired up but the enemy is so clever 
in a way that he can get us to do everything but actually pray and speak change. Because if we want change, we have to pray. Prayer brings change. Um, I had planned on teaching this message Sunday night, but instead God wanted us to pray. Uh, Ricky had a message planned Sunday morning. God also had other plans. And if he had other plans tonight, I would be open. Amen? I'll try not to keep you very long tonight. Um, <clears throat> this message is entitled uh, Petitioning for Government Impact. Do you know what that is? Prayer. That's all that is. Petitioning for government impact. You know, we say prayer and sometimes that word has lost some of its power and the only reason why is because we don't understand what it really uh, is causing to occur. If you understand that when you ask God to do something in the earth, Lord, you are in heaven, I am down here, you are my God, I am your people, Lord, we need you, we praise you, and God, you see some things that are out of line, you see some families that are broken, you see some things that need your touch, and God, we need you. Now, you are in the invisible, we are in the visible, and we need some things to come from the invisible and to manifest here in the visible, amen? And so when you begin to pray and ask God, say, Lord, this is what I need, and then you say, you begin to uh, uh, make those petitions based on Scripture. I don't, every time I pray and I ask God for something, I say, I find something, and I'll say, Lord, you said... And this is what I tell him. I'll tell him what he has said. Because it isn't what I've said. It's what he said. And he is so holy that he will not lie. He cannot lie. So if I find something that he said and I find a condition that needs to be met in order to get uh, that to come down, I'll say, Lord, this is what you said. If I will do this, you would do this. Amen. If my people which are called by my name humble themselves, turn to him, seek his face, he would heal their land. Do we have some land that needs to be healed? America. Do you have some things in your life? Do you have some families, some certain sect of your family that it, that land it is desolate and needs healing? The answer is they need to turn from their wicked ways, humble themselves, seek his face, and then there is a guarantee that their land will be healed. And see, that's what you stand on when you pray. You say, Lord, you see my land. You see this land. You see my cousin's land. You see my brother's land. Whoever it is, God, they need you. Now, I'm going to go witness to them, and I need you to heal them, and I'm going to let them know what needs to take place. And then you witness to them, say, everything's broken, isn't it? Yes, it is. And, I, you know, God will, God will direct you when to talk to them. You want this all fixed? Well, I've got the answer. What? And then you show them the scripture. You just have to do this and he'll heal everything. I mean, there's no better uh, advice. Nothing that works any better than that. Amen? Because it's not about just feelings. God brings results. We, uh, I've got a close family member that... I was talking to over Facebook yesterday. I was bothered. I've been watching some of this individual's posts for a few weeks. Uh, I, I recognize the scenes. I recognize the backgrounds. Uh, I recognize them very well because I used to be in those scenes. 
I used to be in those places. And you can't fool somebody that knows where you are because they've been there before. You ain't, you're not at a, ain't no restaurant that looks like that. <laughs> and because um, I, I recognize the signs of a bunch of sweaty people in the background and uh, a, a bunch of lights uh, the way they are. And it's just, there's, there's not a place that you can go eat that looks like that. And I, there was someone that they knew that they were friends with and they were killed in a car wreck. And I seen so many people that were friends with me on there that knew this person. And what bothers me during this time, because the car accident happened like 2, 3, 4 a.m., something like that. And you begin to see everybody say, oh, you know, rest in peace and you know they're with God now and that sounds nice but what it does is it causes the ignorance that people are in it causes it to deepen uh, and how can people come to fix what's wrong if they don't accept and acknowledge that something's wrong because if that person's going to heaven, then my life is fine and I'm going. Now, I had watched these posts and then uh, they uh, had put out a picture finally of, uh, of someone who they were looking for and uh, he has, had been arrested. But this guy is, other guy is dead. He was killed uh, in this wreck. And I wrote my family member a message. Um, I want to be careful. I want her to, to be here one day, uh, and I'm believing it. And, but I, God had really compelled me. See, I didn't, I, there's so many times I could write stuff, but I don't. I wait for God to give me wisdom. How many know that if you go around Bible thumping, there are plenty of heads to thump, but eventually they're not going to listen. You need wisdom. And so, God, I felt him really compelling me to do this, and I knew it was time. And I wrote them, and I said, you know, I told them I was very, very sorry for their loss, uh, but I cannot stay silent about this because I'm really bothered. There are people that I've seen who are saying that, you know, they're in, entering in the gates uh, I said, and what that causes, if people think that they are there and they know their lifestyle, then they think they can do those things. Now, I was very careful, and I told her, I said, you know, uh, could they be in heaven? Yes. How? By a very slim chance that God was dealing with them right before the car accident happened. That is a risky, risky chance. That is a very risky way to live life. Uh, there's a chance that they lived for a little bit after the wreck and come to find out they were conscious for a little bit right after the wreck. That's the mercy of God. When somebody gets uh, almost killed and they're alive for a short span, uh, I tell you, that y'all have seen the movie, what is it, God's Not Dead? That is the mercy of God. Now, they, that could have happened, but I tell you what, I don't want to live life on could have beens, should have beens, maybes. I need to know, amen? Um, we're very careful with our money. I'm careful what stocks that my money is in. Uh, what, with my 401k, with Roth IRAs, uh, I've got four different things that I'm in and I, and I watch them every year. I don't watch them every month because I drive myself crazy. I look at them every year and I evaluate and see how they did it compared to the rest of the market to see if it is something that I should stay in. I monitor it. And then I'll move one of them if I think, if it's went for one, two, maybe three years and it has not improved, then I will change part of that and put it in something else we have lots of tools in order to make sure that we make very smart investment choices so that we 
try to reduce our risk. It's funny that we spend so much time and have so many tools in order to reduce risk when it comes to money, but when it comes to our own soul that we only get one chance at, we're not as careful. It's very sad. And so I wrote them and I poured my heart out to them and said, you could have been in that car. It may have not been time to pray. Uh, and I sent it, and I received a response back, and I hope I, I, she's back there, in less than five minutes. And they said, I, everything you said, I have had trouble sleeping the past few nights because it's all that's been on my mind. And she knows God. She knows what it's like to be in church. She knows where she's supposed to be. She said, I, 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 I've tried to figure out how I can even talk about this with my friends because I'm afraid they don't realize that. And I know that we're, we're saying these things, but I know that he could maybe not be in heaven. And it bothers me, and it bothers me a lot that these other friends of mine have no idea that he may not be there. And she said, I need help, and I don't know what to do, and I don't know how to talk to them. And we began to have a conversation back and forth, and I gave her a lot of scripture because I told her, you know, here's the thing I know. Because did he make it in? I don't know, but I know this. The Bible says, no drunkard shall enter heaven. The girl that was driving was charged with a DUI. There's a good chance he had been drinking too. And based on the pictures of his environment and his lifestyle, there's a good chance that he had been drinking. No drunkard shall enter heaven. That's what I told her. I said, that's what the scripture says. The other thing, uh, the Bible says, wherever the tree falls, there shall it lie. That tree may have been in beautiful gardens before, but when that tree decides, I want to be transplanted and be over here, if it falls there, there shall it lie. There are people living, hoping, well, you know what? Uh, I got saved when I was a kid and everything's fine. <laughs> Listen, where are you right now? In, in Luke, Jesus says there will be people that come to him and say, Lord, Lord. You guys know because you're good students that Lord means owner. And that's why he says what he says after that. You say, Lord, Lord, owner, owner, but you don't do what I say. Depart from me. I never knew you. So these are people saying, you're my owner. If I owned you, you would obey me. You're not mine. And so I gave her those scriptures and those scriptures dig deep. And I'm waiting to hear a response. I told her, I said, look, you've got my number. You can call at 3, at 4, at 5 a.m. I don't care. I want to be available to be able to talk with you anytime. Because she could be in a car wreck. She could be dying and need somebody to lead her in a prayer. I want to be there. Now, I told her, I said, what's more important, it's important to be saved and, and to make it to heaven, but the most important thing about it is God wants to use you. If that kid got saved, wonderful. But there's still something that he was supposed to do that didn't get done. You know, that makes it exciting for me to live the life as a Christian because it ain't about fire insurance. I've got something important to do. And I love that. Amen? Uh, Becky has been at the bedside of many people that, in her family. It reminds me of my grandmother. I remember my grandmother, her only thing she said she wanted to do in life, whenever I asked her, I'd say, what is your purpose? What is your will? Because we talked about it all the time. My grandmother had me praying for God's will for my life since I was a child. And I said, what, is, what was God's will for you? And she said, to get my family saved. That was it. But that is huge. Do you realize how big that is? Do you remember her saying that? She said it all the time. I want to get my family saved. And she worked tirelessly. And I'm telling you tirelessly because when I was up at 5 a.m. doing things I shouldn't be doing, she was calling me. 
if it wasn't my purpose and I'm saved and I don't have to get up, I'm not getting up. But it was on her mind. I would call her at midnight. I, my parents had already went to bed and I'd be laying in bed and I'd pick up the phone. I could call my grandmother. How many grandmas do you know that you can call at midnight and they will answer the phone and they are as wide awake as you are because she would stay up all night watching Channel 16. She would just kind of go in and out of sleep and she would get up and just walk the house and praise. I mean, that's, that's how she lived. And I would call her and she'd say, hey, Nathan. She had this real high voice. And I'd be under the covers and I'd just sit there just talking to her and it was so wonderful to hear her voice. I realize how big of a purpose that is to want your family saved. Think of somebody in your life, uh, whether you know them personally or not, that is doing big things, big things in ministry. Somebody had an impact on their life that made them turn to God. Somebody in Abraham, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, in Billy Graham's life led him to God. My grandmother led me to the Lord. And her prayers have manifested in my life and I'm working for him today because of what her purpose was. What is your purpose? Well, to find out who you're supposed to be, you have to have a relationship with the one who made you. You have a relationship with him by praying by asking Tyler was asking me uh, because we began to talk about this uh, yesterday I'm going to get to this in a second Um, who in here knows or you have heard of a singer named Katy Perry look at all you heathens Ricky, you don't know who Katy Perry is. I had seen a news article the other day that said something about she was going to be um, playing at the Super Bowl or something for the halftime show. And, and I have seen her name before come up and, uh, because I had actually found a, 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 a CD by someone named Katie Hudson. And it was a Christian CD. And I listened to it. I said, man, this person is so good. This is before I knew. I said, they are awesome. And I was listening to it and I was looking up, like, why have I not heard of them? And then come to find out it was her. She was raised in church. Uh, She made an album when she was a teenager. And after she made that album, I mean, it was beautiful. The music was anointed. She moved to Los Angeles, California. She wanted to find out more about secular music and The rest is history. She still has the influence because she talks about prayer. I was reading in a a, a Wikipedia article about her her parents and about growing up. Now, I don't know all of the lifestyle that she had growing up. It sounds like her parents may have been ridiculously religious in the point because like they couldn't call deviled eggs deviled eggs. They had to call them angeled eggs and Uh, They couldn't eat Lucky Charms because it had the word luck in it and she thought that meant that the Chisera was influenced by Satan or something. So I can see where when people are just ridiculously religious, it can drive people away. That's why it's important that we go by the Bible. Uh, Not what we fantasize or conjure up in our mind, amen. Um, God has made it the way that we're supposed to act in order to be holy. You don't have to find ways to be more holy. Amen. Um, But I was reading that article because I have a 12-year-old son and I have a one-year-old daughter and I constantly think about where they are with God. I constantly think about it because you can't just, you don't just end up with righteous adult children. You don't just by happen chance they get filled with the Holy Ghost and ministered for God. It has to be a plan. It has to be a constant plan into their life. I, I, I've heard so, I, I have, anytime I hear about somebody who is a, um, a, a good Christian who has kids and their kids are Christians and their kids are actually serving God, I study them. I find out everything I can. Tim and uh, Angie... Stowe, 
uh, they were, one of the times they were here a few years ago, I, you know, I've seen their kids, Summer and Isler, I've seen uh, how they were, how engaged they were uh, in the Bible, in God. And so I sat down with Tim one day and I talked to him and I said, I know what the Bible says. I know uh, if we raise up our child in the way they should go, they'll not depart from it. I know these things, but I want to know some personal things. What have you done? And, and we had a conversation for about 45 minutes of what him and Angie went through because I, I want to learn because I only get one chance at this. And I, I got to put everything I have into making sure because it would break my heart when I think about Katy Perry. I can't imagine what her father is going through. When I hear about these stunts of some of these uh, female artists and I, their father figures are also known, I can't think of what possibly could be going through their mind, especially if they're living right and they see where their children are. It would break my heart. I, I, I wish I could make it where he just went to heaven no matter what. If you knew a formula, wouldn't you do it? But we all have a will. All we can do is train them, influence them, and when they get to the age where they can make their own decisions, it's up to them. Now, you still have the job of being an influence. Amen? I'm doing everything I can now so that when he turns 18... 19, 20, whenever he moves out because he's going to be under my influence if he's under my roof. Uh, I want to be an influence now and I want him to want to listen to me so that when he gets older, he'll just naturally want me to be around and to talk to him. Amen? Uh, it takes a lot of prayer. It takes a lot of petitioning. It takes, I can't just say things. I, I have to actually live them. I have to live them in front of him. If I tell him, you read your Bible, but I don't read. If I tell him, you better pray, but I don't pray. What, what do you think he's going to do? Children are going to do what they see you do, not what you say. Y'all know this. I, uh, I smiled when I was at home earlier today. I, I, we both have these little Rubik's Cubes and I was sitting there just moving around, putting them together. I'm trying to get faster at it. It keeps my mind going. I'm like, I've got it down to solving it in under six minutes and I'm trying to get faster at it. And Tyler, I've been teaching him and I, I picked it up and I leaned up against the couch, the back of the couch, and I was just doing like this. And all of a sudden I noticed he had picked his up and he's just looking and, and then he leaned up against the couch and he's doing his. And I... I I started thinking, you know, he does what he sees me do. What are your children seeing you doing? I want my kids to see me praying because I want them to see that change happens because of prayer. How many of you have been praying more this year so far? Reach over and just give yourself a pat on the back. Now, don't stop. Amen. Um, any goal that you set in life, you need to have some way of uh, quantifying what your goal is. If it's still early, it's the, uh, what is the day, seventh? Only seven days in. Happy birthday. Uh, only seven days in. So if you have said, you know what, I'm going to pray more this year. You need to refine that statement just a little bit. I'm going to tell you why. If, if I said, I want to lose weight this year, well, that sounds really good. Well, how much? Okay, I, I want to lose 50 pounds. Well, that sounds really good too. But when this year? That doesn't do anything. You actually have to set a goal. Maybe that 50 pounds, you want, I want to lose 50 pounds in five months. Well, now you have set a goal because now, what, 10 pounds per month. Well, when you talk about prayer, if you're going to do something, you're going to set goals to it. So you need to be setting a goal. So if you said, I want to pray more this year, take now, since we're only seven days in, and you need to think, how much do I want to pray? 
Do I want to pray once per day? Do I want to pray twice per day? Do I always want to make sure that I pray from 7 to 7.30? You need to have some goal that says this is what's going to happen because if your goal is just to pray more this, this year, then if you only prayed, let's say, uh, 200 days last year, well, if you pray 201, then that's more days and that seems like you've done something. But there's still so many more days there that nothing's happening. It needs to be a daily thing. Why? Because... People don't realize it, but they need heaven's influence. And heaven don't influence unless somebody's speaking to God. If we get the revelation that God doesn't do anything unless we ask, unless we are calling on him, then we would be, begin to think, you know what, I need to pray. You begin to realize that prayer is so important when people who pray for you die you begin to realize how important prayer is when those that you know used to pray for you die because there's no more prayers going up for you and you can begin to see things in your life that were being held up by their prayers. I'm thankful someone was praying for me. We need to find time every day because the world needs it. It is that important. Listen, there are things you need to get it in your head because it's so easy to say, well, somebody else will pray. There's other people that God listens to. The, that is the devil wanting to keep you quiet and doesn't want you to say anything because he knows nothing's going to happen unless you're asking. Why does the devil know that? Because he knows the word. He knows it very well. There are things that need to occur every day. There are things that you can influence, but you need to pray. If you want to see something, every time you see something, you say, I want that to change. You need to pray about it right then because you don't realize it ain't just talking to God. You are actually petitioning a real government. And guess what? You're not just petitioning uh, some secretary or uh, some congressman. You are actually talking directly to the head of state, the king of all creation. And he is listening for you every day. And the Holy Ghost is in you saying, I've got some things I need to say. The Lord has some stuff that he needs done. He's got some business he needs done in the earth, but he needs you to speak it. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is important. And it's the most important thing that you can do as a Christian. Without prayer, nothing happens. You would not be saved unless you had prayed a prayer. Amen. Um, <clears throat> let's get into this a little bit. I don't have very long because I'm not going to keep you very long. I will probably have to break this up and uh, do the rest on Sunday. Is that all right? Um, <clears throat> prayer is about government in, uh, government impact. We cannot let people do what they want. We have to be responsible for it, for the earth. It is easy for people to say, well, just separate church and state. You do what you want to do. Let me do what I want to do. Listen, we are here on this earth to influence the earth. That's what ambassadors do. We are here to make sure everything that we can uh, influence for heaven is influenced. Are there people that you know that they walk with God so closely that whenever they get around people, whenever they come into a room, the room lights up? Are there people that you want to be around because, man, I just feel better when I'm around them. They have so much hope. Look, it ain't the person. You are, it, it, you are feeling the manifestation, a small glimpse of the manifestation of God's government because wherever you go, there the kingdom is. Amen. Amen. Um, <clears throat> We have a tendency to try to stay away from people, uh, places uh, that we don't like 
with people that we don't like, behaviors that we don't like. But you can never influence people and places by running away from them. Now, I'm not giving you permission to go to a bar. I'm going to influence this place with the kingdom of God. Uh, Listen, that ain't what I'm saying. But a lot of times there's somebody that gets on our nerves and because they're lost and they, they have ways and they, you see what they do and you see the way they talk and it bothers you. Listen, stay there, influence them, influence them with the kingdom of God. Um, if we avoid things, if we stay away from things, if we become scared of things, we can never influence them. We can never change that place. In fact, anything that we become, uh, we get to a place of fearing and we stay away from, that thing will actually eventually begin to control us. How many times has the enemy kept us from ministering to people, talking to people because we don't realize the devil has kept us away from them? You don't want to be around them. You don't want to be around that, especially if he knows that you're in a place where you can actually do something. Now, if you're a weak Christian, he's going to say, yeah, come around because I'm going to get you changed. But a lot of times we, uh, churches are bad about this. We close ourselves in and we come in here and this is where we are. And then when we leave here, we don't talk anything about God or about the Lord. Listen, you can't influence people if you expect to leave God inside the church. I've done this uh, recently because I've began uh, this year. I've said anything that I see that I want changed, I'm going to pray for it because I want it changed. I had somebody pull out in front of me the other day and I started to blow the horn like I usually do. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that this time. They could get killed pulling out in front of somebody. I said, Lord, help them to become a better driver because they could get killed. Lord, I pray that you would do that. And then I said, no, I didn't. But think about it. Somebody's rude to you. I, we, had a, we went to Cracker Barrel uh, New Year's Day. I love Cracker Barrel. And we went in there and the lady at the counter was kind of rude to Hope. She just, Hope went up to get it, put her name down and she said, what? And Hope's like, we're just wanting to get a seat. And she said, I'm so, the lady said, I'm sorry, I've been here since nine. And uh, she said, that's fine, uh, Nathan and she put her name down and so we got to our seat and we had such a comical service because you could tell it was just chaos in the kitchen Uh, I I, I had got some pancakes with some blackberries and those were fresh blackberries because I had the longest strongest thorn jab me in my gums (laughs) and they had already brought me one pancake that I said I was supposed to have the ones with the fruit top and with the blackberries and he said, oh, well, I'll be back. And he left. And then I told the lady, I said, they were getting me the wrong ones. And she said, I'll go check. And I can't believe they did that. And then he comes back and it was supposed to be on the side. And I didn't say nothing because the blackberries are on there. I said, that's fine. So I started eating them. I got halfway through and I had jabbed myself and I had just pulled it out of there. And the lady come up and she said, is everything all right? I was like, this thorn just jabbed me. I was like, these are some fresh blackberries. I tell you what. And she said, I am so sorry. And she had pancakes. She said, I can't believe they brought you those. I brought you these. And I, I, was, I was like halfway done. And I, I'm very competitive. I always finish my plate. If you've ever went to eat with me, you know that plate's going to be empty. And I was wanting to finish. She didn't ask me. She just took it up and put a fresh plate. And I said, man, I'm going to have to eat more. <laughs> And so I started eating those, and I, usually I would just be like, my goodness, they just, dang, things are out of order here. But I just began to pray in my mind, Lord, you know, this, I've worked in a restaurant. I understand the chaos they're going through. Think about it. Next time somebody just goes off on you, they're probably not going off on you because of you. There's other things going on in their life. Ask them, stop them, and just say, I know that this can't be really all because of me is is everything all right you would be surprised how many times people would break down and say you know what I, i need i need they need somebody to talk to 
Who better to talk to than an ambassador with power on the earth who has a connection with the king, the ancient king of da- all, uh, ancient king of days that can change their life and change their situation. See, you're not asking those people because you don't realize how powerful prayer is and how powerful you are. Amen. You don't, because if you realize that, you would be looking for problems. What's your problem? Because I'm going to pray for you. If I'm telling you, if you realized how powerful your prayers were, you would get all of your situations solved. You would know that answers are on the way and you would begin to look for answers for other people. We have gotten used to our lives. We've gotten used to the times we come to church. We've gotten used to praying. We've gotten used to who we talk to. And so we quit talking to new people. I feel the Holy Ghost. You know, Tiffany back here has done something really good. And I think that we need to take an example and lead by example from what she's doing. uh, Because she has been touched by God. And it's touched her in such a way. She said, man, this is so good. It's helped me. And I want to help somebody else. And so guess what she does? She's gone and talked to other people and said, you need to come to this church. Why did she do that? Because something was touched in her life and she wanted to share it with others. I I told Hope the other day, I said, you know, she's brought different people. And I thought to myself, shame on me. We get complacent. We get used to who's here. I had someone uh, ask the other day, they said, we're looking for a good Pentecostal church and on Facebook. I said, yes, sir. I know one. And I messaged them and told them the address. We need to, listen, this place is not gonna get filled up just because we want it to real bad. It gets filled up by The people who come in, getting touched, getting blessed, they go out and bless others. If we are enjoying what it is that we're getting, why not bring somebody else to the well? Come on. Who are we talking to? If you have asked the people in your life many times to come and they're not coming, you need to find some other people. I need to find some other people because we have... Lots of available seating. Listen, this chair, and I feel the Holy Ghost, this chair was made by someone. It was designed. It was, there was a prototype at one time. They made it for a purpose. That purpose is to hold somebody's hindquarters. Amen? Amen? Look at all of these chairs that have been made for a purpose and that purpose is not being met. They have not been made in vain. Who's going to fill them? Somebody. But guess what? We have to be the ones to bring them in. Do not bring somebody here just to get them saved. Sometimes that's what we do. They need to get here to church and get saved. You are the church. You need to get them saved where you are. Then get them in here so that they can learn. Now, if the only thing you can do is get them in, get them in. God will save them. But a lot of times we think, I got to get them to church so I can get them saved. You get them saved where they are. You are the church. Then guess what? They will come in wanting to know more about what it is that is stirring on the inside of them. This place is for learning. We learn. We talk to God. We get instruction. That's why we come because we are servants of the Most High God and we want to know more about Him. Let me give you some scripture so we can go. Uh, let's see here if I'm going to read this one. <clears throat> I might skip this one and save it. Anybody learn anything? Yeah, I'll go ahead and read this one. Mark 6, 21 through 26. 
Give me five minutes. And when a convenient day was come that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains and chief estates of Galilee, and when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod and them that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it thee. And he swore unto, unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee unto the half of my kingdom. That is some dance. I have never done anybody. I don't own a kingdom. I've never had somebody do something in my life that pleased me so much where I said, ask me of anything, even up to half of my property. Have you? But this is what Herod said. Now, Herod is a king. Very important concept. And when he made this statement, it was an oath. It was a declaration. And he couldn't go back on it. You're talking about an open, uh, a blank check. This is a blank check. This shows me how powerful of an influence the enemy is. Because to not ask for half of the kingdom, but instead to ask for John's head on a charger, that shows you the power of Satan's influence. That's a different message. Let me go on. And she went forth and said unto her mother, what shall I ask? And she said, the head of John the Baptist. And she came in straightway with haste unto the king and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceeding sorry, yet for his oath's sake and for their sakes, which sat with him, he would not reject her. He could not. Because he made an oath. Even a uh, unjust king has to stand by his oath. This book, I'm telling you, you, you're sitting here thinking, man, if, if a king had promised me half of the kingdom, man, that would be a wonderful day. I'd have everything that I need. The king of kings became the word and he has to by his by his own sovereignty and holiness he has to go by his word he has to go by what he has said it is right in front of us if you need something the answer is in this book if there is something missing for your life what you need is in this book all you have to do, because it is filled with declarations by the king of kings, and he is a righteous king. You want heaven to impact your situation? Talk to heaven. Petition heaven based on the word. Say, God, I need this, and you said this. That same couple, Tim and Angie, I... Angie was here, uh, um, what was that, three weeks ago? Two weeks ago. And she began to talk about one of her kids. She's gotten out of the house and she's just has some questions about stuff. Everybody goes through that stage. But I understand the worry, the concern that can be there when your kids are questioning things and trying to figure things out for themselves. And you fear for them because there are a lot of influences. There are a lot of influences that are dressed up like church. And the Lord prompted me with a scripture that I pray to God about all the time because I believe his word. If you raise up a child in the way that he should go, when they get older, they will not depart. I pray that and I say, God, I pray over Tyler 
every night and I'll, he'll be asleep and I'll be praying over him. I'll say, Lord, you see everything that's gonna happen in his life, but you see what we're doing. You said, God, I didn't say this. You said it, that if I raise him up in the way that he should go, when he gets older, he will not depart. That means if he walks away for a little while, he's coming back. He's not gonna be able to escape. Why? Because I have prayed and because God's word is infallible. You've got to believe that. And I spoke this to Angie. I said, look, you've raised them. I've got uh, uh, instruction from you. I've got ideas from you based on what has happened. You've got to stand on the word. Tim wrote me today. He was asking some questions about the trip and and I, I was giving him some answers and I was, I was getting ready to call him yesterday and I said, I, it's funny you just you texted me because I was getting ready to write, write, uh, call you yesterday and I, I brought up about the kids and how are they doing and uh, he told me what was going on that she'd come home, things are getting better, she uh, had gotten homesick. See, listen, you, you get the presence of God, you get a relationship with God, you've been raised the way that you're supposed to I don't care how far in the world you go, you're going to get homesick. Amen? And, and the last thing he said, he said, but we're standing on God's word. They shall not depart. Listen, you have to. The enemy is going to attack your mind. He is going to cause you to doubt. That's what causes you to quit praying and asking for things because you don't believe it can happen. Don't let the devil shut you up because if he shuts you up, he is shutting down the government in your life. Well, God's good and he's good to me all the time, whether I pray or not. Listen, you're gonna see things begin to fall apart in your life. You're gonna see trouble, more trouble. You're gonna see the neglect happen in your life because you've neglected to pray. I'm going to close with that because I don't want to be a liar. I said five minutes. <laughs> Did anybody learn anything? Did this touch anybody? Uh, you know, as ministers, teachers, you know, we have the Bible we preach about faith. We preach about prayer. You can go to churches and you can hear messages on prayer. You can hear messages on faith, tithing, the whole thing. But you have to understand the purpose behind it for it to stick and for you to realize the importance of it. Amen? We were listening to somebody a minute ago, um, me and Hope. Um, she had bought something online from this guy she had heard. Uh, from Focus on the Family, and we were listening to it, and it was so good, and he was talk to, talking about parenting and uh, kingdom parenting, and um, he said, uh, you know, if you just give your kids rules, then when they get away from you, they're not going to have a reason to follow the rules. He said, you, I hope are you back there? I thought I'd see her wave from the floor or something. But if you have a relationship along with the rules, even if you get to a place where you don't want to follow the rules, for the sake of the relationship, you'll continue to follow them. How many times do we see parents who just give their kids instruction, but they don't tell them why? I, I, God's been dealing with me, that with me for the past year because... I have said this many times, and I know that you have. Uh, I've, Tyler has said something. I've, Tyler, I need you to do this. Why? Because I said so. <laughs> they, do you all know what Google is? <laughs> Google exists because people have questions. They want answers. They want purpose. You can't just tell them, don't do this. this. The Bible says, don't do that. They need something to go along with it. They need a relationship with him. Amen? There are times where I have wanted to buy something real bad. I've said, man, I want to buy this. 
And I have the ability, I have the power to just say, you know what? I ain't asking hope nothing. <laughs> because it's a lot of money. If I ask her, she's going to say no. So I'm going to buy it anyways. Do I have that power? I do. I could do it. I could also be in a lot of trouble. See, there are rules that come along with the relationship. And I could break the rules if I didn't care about the relationship. But because of the relationship, I go to her and say, honey, I love you. She pulled that on me not too long ago. She, uh, um, <clears throat> she was talking about um, something that she wanted and she said, I know when she wants something because she, she won't ask anything about it. She'll just say, don't this look nice? Look at that. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it is beautiful. And she got this from somebody she had heard and she said, don't you want me to have it? <laughs> Jesse the planner said, uh, been talking about it one day because his wife does the same thing. And then she said, don't you want me to have it? And he said, of course I want you to have it. I want you to have everything. Y'all Yo, stand with me. <clears throat> if you don't know God, I pray that you would come to know him tonight. Listen, you may think, and I, I really feel this from the bottom of my heart, you, you may think that, you know, God loves me. God's listening to me. I pray to God all the time. Uh, I know this because I've got friends who are lost and they say, I pray to God all the time. Listen, God cannot, I don't care what people say. I don't care what they talk about. God cannot even hear your prayers if you are not saved. The Bible says if you regard iniquity in your heart, he cannot hear your prayers. Well, I love the Lord. That's wonderful. But the Bible says if you love him, you'll keep his commandments. So if you're breaking his commandments, that invalidates, it negates what you say. <laughs> because you can't show love unless you're obeying him. And you can't really serve him unless you have a relationship with him, unless you have submitted to him. The only prayer that he can hear from you right now, and he is his ears are attentive to listen for your prayer, is the prayer to ask him to come into your life. He is listening for those words. If you pray this prayer, you can begin to read that Bible. The benefits of the Bible can begin to apply to you and you can begin to ask from him according to his will and he'll give it to you. It's in the word. All you need to do right now is pray this prayer because he's listening for it right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I confess that I'm a sinner. But I know that you died on the cross. Jesus, you shed your blood for my sins so that I could be forgiven. I pray right now that you would come into my heart because, Lord, from this day forward, I accept you. I acknowledge you as the Lord of my life, Jesus. Change me in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer I pray that you would go to lmcigreenville.org, click contact at the top and let us know. God bless you. Before we go.